year there was a, an ethics bill that almost was the most comprehensive in the universe, yeah. according to one former lawmaker. Uh, <laughs> any, will there be any attempt to follow up on what did pass last year? Yeah, yeah I, I think there's certainly, you know, obviously that's an issue that was near and dear to my heart. I started at the beginning of the session with it, and uh, uh, and, and we, we made a lot of progress. Uh, we, we eliminated the committee-committee transfer. We, we gave newfound powers in Missouri Ethics Commissions, all that are good things. There were certain things that you know that were important to me about uh, limiting the ability to go legislator to lobbyists, lobbyist gifts. And, you know, I'm beginning to think there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I think you'll find out in the upcoming weeks there's some ideas that I've got that will address some of those things. The Senate has, or at least some Senate leaders, intended to make a run at uh, making Missouri a right to work state. Is that something that you would like to see happen? Anything that will create jobs in the state of Missouri is on the table. Uh, the right to work is, is something that I'm sure we will discuss, but it's not something that the House is going to lead on. Do you, see, do you see your jobs bills all coming from one committee, or are you, know, no. are you going to kind of split that out? Actually, no. This year we've got two uh, committees. We've got an Economic Development Committee that I'm honored that Ann there has agreed to accept. That's where uh, a majority of the stuff is going to come out. But uh, Representative Jerry Nolte, who all of you know handled the Ford uh, bill during special session, did a fantastic job. He's chair of International Trade and Job Creation. So you may see stuff like... Uh, stuff related to the China Hub that goes through there. Both individuals are, are very, very talented, uh, good friends of mine. They'll do a great job in half the state. Do you envision new job creation programs or just enhancing quality jobs and some of the others that are now in place? Everything is on the table, and so I would envision that we can look at the programs that are good, hopefully expand them, but be open-minded enough to be able to accept. I mean, I was a, a supporter of most IRA. Uh, we passed... Uh, uh, Representative Tim Jones handled a bill to try and bring more youth sports to the state. It passed the Missouri House last year. I think that was a great bill. So, uh, you know, we are in the process of meeting with the chamber, with economic development leaders from across the state to get input from them to, uh, of what they need, tools they need to be successful and grow in this state. And uh, the Missouri House, the one thing the Missouri House will be, it's open for business, and we're going to try and put people back to work. Uh, the first bill is going to be, uh, well, the first resolution will be to adopt the rules that, that Tim Jones has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and, 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 and I will tell you that, you know, I had a, I had a great uh, meeting with Minority Leader Talboy last night, myself and the Chief of Staff and his, and, and I think you're going to see something that may be unprecedented and, and have an overwhelmingly bipartisan vote on the rules. You know, and, and the unique thing, and I think Representative Talboy appreciates this, I've got 106 Republicans, I've got a clear mandate from the voters of the state, I could probably do whatever I wanted within our party and ignore the Democrats. I think that's the wrong way to go, and I think Representative Talboy appreciates that. I think you're going to see a diminished role of special committees. As you're well aware, the Speaker uh, appoints the ma majority members of the committee, the minority leader appoints the minority leaders, but when you get to special committees, uh, the Speaker appoints all of them. And, and I think uh, that kind of uh, subverts the power of the minority leader to be a part of the process. You're going to see a greatly diminished role of special committees, and I think Representative Talboy is appreciative for that. Steve, the, the Chief Justice has talked about the corrections and policy needing to be changed, and you've put some Democrats in key spots in the, that regard with yeah. Representative Kelly and Representative uh, Black. Is that designed to pursue those ideas that have, were on the table last session yeah. in part? No. Uh, Virginia, it was, it was designed because they were the best person for the job. I really didn't think about uh, an agenda with the governor or anything. I mean, you look at, for example, you look at Chris Keller. I mean, he's a former budget chair. He's the ranking member in the minority, and he's someone to be perfectly candid with. I've been able to work with, you know, and uh, do we agree on everything? No. Uh, you know, he's wrong half the time. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> the, but my caucus may think more than that. So. <laughs> but, 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 you can't, but you can't argue his credentials and his sincerity to try and move this state in a positive direction. Uh, Representative Linda Fisher uh, is, is from a neighboring district of mine. You know, she's in the center of corrections. She's got Bon Terre, Potosi, Farmington's not far. You know, I mean, she's a natural choice for it. And she's always, if you remember as a freshman, she voted for rules when many of her Democratic colleagues didn't. 
And, and she told me afterwards I voted for him because I thought you were being fair. And that's the kind of person I don't need. I'm not asking for a person that agrees with me all the time. My own caucus doesn't agree with me all the time. I just want somebody that's going to be honest, reasonable, fair, and work hard on behalf of the state. Representative Nasheed, she's one of my better friends in the Capitol. She has a unique perspective on things that are important uh, in the urban core, whether it be education, whether it be reform, whether it be dropout, whether it be local control of the police department. And, and, and I trust her. And so uh, those individuals are going to do a great job. And I will tell you, that I think universally the response from my caucus has been outstanding. And uh, they understand that they're all part of the team. You might as well just call it what it is, it's a tax, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and so, you know, and these are the individuals who have knocked on thousands of doors over the past year. And so they're, cl they're the closest to the people. And did, I don't know, did you guys hear a big groundswell of raising taxes? <laughs> okay, so, you know, and, and I may be the speaker, and I, I'm honored to, to have the ability to do that. But, but I answer to, to my caucus, and there's just not a groundswell. I think, you know, like I said uh, in November, the, the citizens of the state want a government that's accountable, that lives within its means, just like each and every family. What about the fair tax? What about the proposal eliminating the state income tax in favor of a, a large rural sales tax? What right. about those issues? Those, those are still on track. I'm going to refer those bills to committee. Uh, the fair tax has had bipartisan support in the past, and I think it's something that should be on the table. And listen, keep in mind. Uh, on an issue like the fair tax, the voters are going to decide. We're, talk we're not talking about doing it without the consent of the voters. It will go on the ballot and the voters will decide what type of, of tax collection that they want to fund their government with. And I, and I think asking the voters that is something that's reasonable. What do you favor? I favor, I favor, I favor a, a fair tax, a consumption-based tax. I think if you look at states like Tennessee that's very, very similar to us that have it, they do well. What level would the sales tax have to be in your estimation? Well, I think it depends on how big the base is. You know, I mean, if you make a broad sales tax base, the number goes down if you shrink the sales tax base. And so there's a lot of details there that need to be worked out, but it certainly deserves our, our time and our consideration. I'd love to see more energy produced. Uh, a member of our leadership, Jeannie Riddle, is from that region. But uh, the devil's in the details, and I think, you know, you have to be careful if, if uh, electric companies are able to pass on the cost to the consumer. Is there any incentive for the, for the utility to keep costs down, right? If, if I go out and buy a car, you know, and I know Rudy Keller's paying for it, will I get a $20,000 car or will I get a $50,000 car? No offense to you, Rudy, if I get a $50,000 car. Yeah, I get a $50,000 car. So, but you, you understand what I'm saying, Tony. I mean, if, if, they, if they pass on all the costs to the consumers, you've got to have a mechanism by which you can, that there's some accountability that they just won't say, yeah, I need you to get that done this week. Uh, we can do it next year, next week for 20 million or this week for 40 million. You know, I mean, you've got to have the ability uh, to, to have some accountability. So, but that's an issue that we're welcoming to have. Uh, clearly, uh, it ran into opposition in the Senate uh, a couple years ago, and, and that's probably where the fight will be. And, and we may decide to, to see what the Senate does before it comes over here. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, John Deal is going to be the chairman of redistricting, and he's the expert on it. But my understanding, John, is we, we will probably, we're John, we'll, we'll probably have the, the census data maybe by the end of December. We'll know in the end of December whether we keep nine seats or we go down to eight. And then we'll get the census data, the census track data uh, toward the end of February when we start. And, and so, so clearly that's something, and to be perfectly candid with you, I'd like to get that over and done with early on in the session. Uh, I'd like to see it out of the house by the end.